What is up everyone and welcome back to this channel. Today we finally go ahead and finish the setup of the drone that we built in the full complete build video. Now if you haven't seen that build video and you're thinking about building one of these drones that you can use for racing and acro and getting this sweet cinematic footage then you should definitely check that video out. I'll have a card right here that you can click. But anyways, today we're going to take this quad and we're going to configure everything software wise. I'm going to show you all of the steps uh, from a finished build up to flying your first flight. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. So we're going to start here. If you haven't done it already, you should download the Betaflight configurator. Just look for the Betaflight configurator uh, on Google and you'll find it. Note that this is not the Chrome app that uh, they have actually went away from the Chrome app. So right now I'm running 10.6.0, but oh, of course you should use the latest version. And as for making this video, the latest version for my flight controller happens to be Beta Flight 4.1. But you're gonna of course continue with this tutorial and take the latest one. So let's get started. So the first step is of course we have our quad here. And we of course don't have any props on it. I have a battery ready here for the next step too. And we're gonna take this micro USB uh, uh, connector and plug it into the flight controller. So now that I've connected it, it sh should start showing up here in the beta flight. Uh, you could always just go around and try the different ports and see which it is. Note that you actually do need to download like the drivers here. There are links for different operating systems here. So definitely go and download that. And this is what it looked like the first time. Right here we can see the firmware version. I've actually already updated this. I used this a bit on 4.0.5, but today I'm gonna do like the whole setup. So we're gonna go to the absolute latest version. You should see that if I move the quad, it should uh, correspond to the movement there you see on the screen. So that's really a good sign. But the thing is, we're not really gonna do much right here. We're just gonna check what target it uses. So the flight control I have uses the Fury F4 OSD. So we know that we're gonna flash that one because the first thing we're gonna do is actually flash our firmware. So then while we're in here, we're also gonna go into the CLI and type BL for bootloader mode. And this will take our flight controller into bootloader mode. So as you can see, it says D view there. Then we're gonna go into the firmware flasher. We're gonna look for our flight controller. Uh, and I'm using the, as we looked at, I'm using the Fury F4 OSD. We're gonna choose this option, the one that's not legacy. Uh, that's new with uh, Beta Flight 4.1. And if you're watching this in the future, then there probably won't even be that legacy option. But for now, we're gonna use this one. And for version, we're gonna choose 4.1.0 because it's the latest, of course. If you're watching this at a later date, you should always choose the latest, of course. Uh, we're gonna click in full chip erase. You should always do this in the beginning. It will actually erase all the settings and stuff and that might be good because if you're updating from like a lot of versions, a lot of stuff may have changed and it's just bad to have old settings left. If you're updating from a previous version, you could always just go ahead and go into the CLI and type dump to get all of your settings so you have them saved somewhere. So then we're gonna go ahead and load the firmware online like this. And there it is. You can see it's the right version. It's the Fury F4 OSD. And then we're gonna go ahead and press flash. So. And it's successful. Then we can go ahead and choose our port. This is the right one for me. So we're gonna go ahead and connect. Sometimes it gets kind of stuck here and then you need to press it again and just press it and then uh, you'll connect and you will probably get this pop-up the first time. So there are no custom defaults for this board available in normal board will probably not as custom these are applied. Do you want to apply the custom defaults for this board? So the new targets actually all flash from like the same binary and then they go ahead and apply the changes for that specific flight controller. So we're gonna go ahead and apply the custom defaults. You should always choose this option. And now it's gonna update, so all the pinouts and UARTs and everything are connected to the right, correct ports. Then we're gonna go ahead and connect again, and there we go. We're gonna go ahead and set our quad down on a flat surface uh, that doesn't move, and then we're gonna go ahead and press calibrate accelerometer. And then it says finished here, and then we're done with that. 
Then we're gonna start configuring stuff. So we'll go ahead and go over to the ports tab first. So uh, you should, for, so this first row is for the USB. You should never ever turn this off because what happens then is that you can't connect to the flight controller with the USB cable. And um, then it's really hard to change this because then you need like an FDDI adapter and so on. So that's why this is grayed out. So just never, uh, never change anything on this first row. The second row is the UART number one. And we used UART number one for our receiver. So we'll go ahead and, and add serial RX to that one. This might actually be switched off because we haven't configured to SBUS yet, we'll see. But we'll go ahead and configure that anyways. And then for UART number three, we used our, we connected our VTX. So we'll go ahead and set that to uh, VTX IRC tramp right here. Uh, yours might actually use smart audio, it depends on what VTX you have. And it's really easy to just check that. I'm gonna go through later how to use the smart audio and then you can just see how it works. So then UART 6, we have the GPS. So we're gonna say switch this to GPS like that. And then we're gonna set the baud rate for the GPS to uh, let's see here, 57600, because that's the one that works with the GPS I have, and that's linked below in the description. Now, if you have trouble getting your GPS working first, of course, try auto, then go ahead and try a few of this, these out. For me, 57600 worked perfectly, and I think that's the most common one, so definitely try that one first. Then we're gonna go ahead and save and reboot. Wait for this one, and press connect. And let's see here if it actually saved yeah, it actually saved all of that. Sometimes this get like flipped off because you haven't configured your uh, receiver to actually use a protocol that uses that RX input on the UART. So you might be, need to go back and do that. So we're gonna use DSHOT 600, that's perfect. If that's not set up, uh, you should definitely use that if you're easy supports it. If you're using the one that I used in this, uh, in the previous build video, then this is the correct option. And uh, then there's not a whole lot we have to change here. Our flight controller is aligned correctly, so we don't need to change that. But if in if your, uh, if your flight controller is mounted like sideways and you see that this doesn't correspond correctly, then you can always go in here and change the alignment. We have 8K, 8K as our frequency on, we can set it in a craft name. Now it will use this on the OSD where you put like your tag. So whatever you type in here, you can have in your OSD. I'm gonna type uh, drone X like that. Here you can save your camera angle. This is just for reference if you do like a dump. So I have like 35 degrees, I'm gonna type in that. Then we're gonna go ahead and select our receiver type. And for my case, that is of course SBUS. So this is correct. And SBUS over here. Scroll. Then we're gonna turn on the GPS because we do have a GPS and it's using U blocks. So we'll go ahead and press that and we'll go ahead and let it be on auto config. We're gonna make sure the air mode is on, OSD is on, anti gravity is on, dynamic filter is on. Now I'm not gonna go ahead and explain all of those because that would make this video really long, but you definitely want all of those stuff. And we can have the beeper on all of this for now, that's fine. What you can do actually though, is turn on the beeping for USB. If your quad is like constantly beeping when the USB is connected, then you just turn off this, but uh, this one doesn't, so it's fine. Perfect, then we're done on this page. We'll just go ahead and save that. And for the power and battery tab, you actually need to do a lot of calibration. And if you're using the same config as I did in my build, then you can start off with these numbers. Then you have to fly and look at uh, the used milliamp hours and look at the used milliamp hours on your charger. And then you uh, change this scale value here. And if you want more info on how to do this, there's a great video on Joshua Bardwell's channel. I'll have it linked below. Uh, we'll go to pit tuning. So here you can change all your settings and rates and everything. But generally the quads usually fly actually pretty great even on the stock pids. Uh, these days with like these higher versions of beta fly. And after a bit of flying, here are the rate profile that I think works really well with this quad. So if you go to the second tab, the rate profile, you can input these numbers, try them out. If you don't like them, change them to whatever you want. Now it's time to turn on our transmitter. So I'm just gonna go and get my transmitter. 
And before anything just starts working here, you actually need to bind your receiver with your transmitter. That's different on all the transmitters and all the receivers, but it's pretty similar. So on the turn the evolution, you just go into the menu and then you go to the RX bind. Then it's gonna wait to bind with the receiver. And then while powering on your quad, just hold down a little button on the receiver and then it will just say bind okay. And that's it. And it's very similar to all of your receivers. You have to check your manual to see how it, how it uh, does it on yours. So with our transmitter on, we'll go ahead and plug in the battery so that our receiver gets power. Depending on how you wire this, uh, your receiver might actually get power from the flight controller. In that case, you might not even need to do this. But, and, but now we can see that if I move the sticks on my controller, it, they do actually move in the beta flight configurator, which is awesome. So uh, here we can see all the stick movements. They all correspond to 1000 to 2000, and they're pretty exact, all of them. You can, can trim them out if they're not super exact. If you see like a lot of flickering like here in the middle range, then you might actually wanna turn up like this RC dead band. But we're gonna keep it at zero because this control is actually pretty exact. Then we're gonna test our switches and make note of which switches go where. Okay, so this one is number two, this one's number three, this one's number four, and this one's probably number one. Nope, okay, it wasn't, but I'm not gonna use that one anyway, so it doesn't really matter. So that we got, now that we got this working, we're gonna go ahead and go to our modes tab, taking note of the, what the switches were. So now you're gonna go ahead and start setting your different ranges. So I'm gonna have my arm switch on uh, auxiliary number four. So that is this switch. You can see I'm switching this switch like here in the back now. And when I do, you can see that this yellow part is moving around. So I'm gonna have my arm range over here. So in both these two settings, it's actually armed. Then we're gonna go ahead and add a switch for angle mode. So we're gonna have angle mode on auxiliary number four. So if I just go one step, it goes into angle mode and also arms. And if you go two steps, then I'm in rate mode. So angle mode is this mode where it always stays like level if you let go of the stakes. It can always be good to have that, like for a fail safe, let's say you're flying a long way, uh, and then your video starts getting pretty bad then you can switch into that mode and uh, try to get out of it like that. But if you don't have any mode like this uh, uh, set, well then it's gonna be in rate mode, which is like the standard flying mode. Then we're gonna go ahead and add a beeper. And I'm gonna have my beeper on the auxiliary number two, like so. Let's see, that's this one in the middle right here. And I'm also gonna go ahead and add uh, VTX pit mode, I think. So let's see where that is. VTX pit mode, add range. And we're gonna go ahead and add that one to the auxiliary number three. So this uh, VTX pit mode will actually turn the VTX power way down. And that's great because when you're trying to find your quad and it's laying still a long time with a super high power VTX like this, you really don't want it to get like super hot and burn itself out. So it's really good to be able to switch over to pit mode while you're trying to find your quad. And we could actually add flip over after crash, but I, I don't know, I don't really see the point of it because, well, this quad's gonna be pretty bad at flipping over. Well, I guess we could add it. Let's add it to our auxiliary number three, this first step. Yeah, that would be perfect. Then we'll just go ahead and save that. And we're gonna go ahead and move on to the motors. So we still have the battery powered in from turning the out the receiver. So, and we don't have any props on, so I'm gonna just tick this box. Now you're gonna spin up the motors like this. And you're gonna make note of what direction they go. So this one's gonna go like that which is correct. And this motor is gonna spin like this, which it does. And this one is gonna spin like this, which it does. And last but not least, this motor will spin like this, which it does. So uh, if any of your motors are spinning the wrong direction now, so then you should like note down what number is spinning the wrong direction. Is it motor one, is it motor two, or so on. And we're gonna fix that in the Beale Heli suite. So go ahead and open the Beal Heli configurator app and just press read setup here. You might need to actually plug in the battery for this to work. 
In that case, just make sure to take off your props first. And here we can see all of the four ESCs. Now for the ones that spun the wrong direction, we just change them from whatever they are to the other. So if they were a normal, change them to reversed and so on. Then just press right setup and then you can go ahead and disconnect. It's that simple. And now we're gonna go ahead and move on to the OSD. So it's pretty personal like what you have in your OSD and I encourage you guys to like try out, see what you wanna have. I'm gonna go ahead and add the battery average cell voltage. This one's great because it shows, it takes like your full voltage and it divides it by the number of cells because it's easier to keep track of that number because then it's always the same number you should look for and no matter what of your quads you're flying. Then we're gonna go ahead and add the uh, battery current draw. Yeah, so this is really great because then you know the like capacity you've used and this is actually super helpful and this can really be like your metric of when to land. You know how much power your battery has and then you can go like a bit under that. So if you have like a 1300 then I would fly to like a thousand here. Although note that it can be a bit off like the first time you use it. Uh, you might want to like uh, configure it better in the power and battery. Anyways, that's for another video, but definitely try to use that one. We'll add the craft name. So here you can have your tag that we wrote in earlier. So it says DroneX right there. Come to GPS. We're gonna add the GPS speed. We're gonna add the sats. And we're gonna add the home direction. Let's see, where is that? Here, the home direction and the home distance. So I'll just put this right here. So this is really convenient. This will like point uh, to wherever you're uh, started flying from. This will say how long you've flown. It's really convenient when you're doing this a bit more long range flights so you don't get lost and stuff like that. Then right here we're gonna have the speed. Speed is key. And we're gonna have just about that, the number of satellites. You really wanna have the number of satellites when you're using the GPS because you wanna know when it's ready to start flying. And then also we'll just go ahead and add a timer for armed. So I know how long I've been flying. We'll put that right over there. Are we actually using? We're using number three. So we're gonna change that up to number one and press save. There we go, disconnect. Then we're just gonna go ahead and connect the battery and we'll check in the goggles. And there we go. I can actually see all of the stuff and yeah, this route looks pretty good. We can also see in the FPV feed that it started counting up the milliamps used. Uh, so that's also great. So now it's time to go into the video transmitter settings. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna input uh, stuff into this VTX table. Uh, but you can just add rows like this for yourself, like say, oh, it's the band A for instance, and it uses the factory settings. But what we, we're gonna do actually is, we're gonna go into the link here. We can find, can find that link right there. And then you will get, go to this website. And here you can actually find a few different uh, VTXs. For instance, the iFlight, the Force Long Range, which, is, which just happens to be the one I'm using right now. So I'm just gonna download the file for the international version. Uh, mine uh, got named .json.txt, so that's obviously wrong. Now when we go ahead and save, we're gonna, uh, so we're just gonna unclick this use text. So it does actually use JSON. Save, bam, it's saved get this JSON file and then we'll go ahead and press load from file and go to our downloads and there it is open it up and there we go so now all of the information is inputted here fascinating it actually even inputted the power levels so now everything should be just working which is awesome and they even named the bands like this is really nice actually. Now we're, when, when we're in the OSD and changing our settings we can actually see exactly what channels and frequencies we have and we can also change the power level. So let's go ahead and test that right now. So when we're plugging in our quad you can see it says here yaw left and pitch up. So if we go ahead and do that with the controller we'll get into the menu here. We'll then go ahead and go into VTX TR for tramp. 
for tram telemetry. Then we can go ahead and change settings here. For instance, turn it on and off pit mode. We can see that's working, changing the tram speed power. I will go ahead and change mine to race band four because that's what I'm gonna fly on. And then we'll just press confirm. And we can now see that it disconnected from my goggles and I have to change the channel on my goggles to race band four to find it again. And there we go. So this is just a really convenient way to change the channel and the quad will actually remember what you set here. Also you can change the transmit power when you're flying with other people. I usually fly on one watt when I'm flying alone, but then on like something like 200 when I'm flying with friends. Before going out to a field to fly, it's always good to do a test tower. And yes, I know what you're thinking. I might as well do this inside where I'm building this quad. It's in the middle of the night, but please let me stop you right there. You definitely want to go out to a safe spot and then stand far away from the quad you never know what's gonna happen the first time they can go ahead and arm and just try to hover it a bit over the ground and then just set it down again now if you have configured something wrong like a prop direction or maybe a motor is spinning the wrong way the prop is on the wrong way or the flight controller alignment is wrong then we just fly all over the place so definitely take a bit of caution when doing this first step and then I would definitely recommend to check out my five tips before your maiden flight video before doing your first flight. It's definitely gonna help you have a very good experience. So hopefully you got your quad flying at this point and that is pretty much it. Now it was pretty hard to get this video up in a really like, uh, like short and concise format to like really get everything in it. So I'm sorry if I couldn't go into all that much detail into all of the specific steps, but if you have any problems, feel free to ask them in the comment section below. Also, if you have like some more complicated questions and you want to talk to me a bit more, then you can always go ahead and direct message me on Instagram, uh, which you can find me on the DroneX Instagram. So that was it for this video and I hope you liked it and stay tuned for my next video where I will be reviewing the Cadex Tarsier, this 4K camera here which I've installed in the 6 inch drone now and I think it's gonna be pretty cool. So yeah, until next time, I'll see you in the next video. <laughs>